All right, so now for the next type of gate, we're we'll looking at the ataxic gate. An ataxic gate is also known as what? Cerebellar gate. Ataxic gate, also known as cerebellar gate, okay? So in looking at the gate, we get to look at the definition, we get to look at the characteristics, we get to look at the causes, what could cause that type of gate, all right? You know, gate is a characteristic movement, right? So each type actually have what is causing it. Then we get to look at the diagnosis and the possible treatment for that gate, okay? So for ataxic gate, it's also known as what? Cerebellar gate. Now let's get to have in-depth knowledge on it. For definition, we say that this ataxic gate is a type of walking abnormality, right? It's characterized by what? Uncoordinated, unsteady movements, okay? And there's a wide base of support. Can you see how this person is putting his leg here, then leaving a wide space to put the other leg here? Do you understand? There's a wide base of support in ataxic gate. So the patient is walking with their legs open. Do you understand? That's just a way to, to check out. All right. So this gait pattern is often associated with what? Cerebellar dysfunction. So that's why they call the ataxic gait or cerebellar gait. Okay. The cerebral dysfunction or disorders, all right, and it's basically affecting the central nervous system. What is the characteristics of this gait? There's unsteady movement, okay? So the person walks with uncoordinated and jerky movements. There's a wide base of support. The person's feet are placed widely apart just to maintain balance, all right? Staggering. The person may appear to be staggering or varying from side to side. Difficulties with turns. For turning or changing directions, it may be particularly what? Challenging. I may result in loss of balance, okay? Irregular steps. The step length and timing are inconsistent. The person is not moving accordingly like a normal person, okay? Now, causes. It could be cerebral dysfunctions, right? So conditions like cerebral ataxia, multiple sclerosis, or cerebellar tumors can actually cause this type of gait. It could be alcohol intoxication. So acute alcohol intoxication can temporarily what impair cerebral function, leading to ataxic gait. Okay, peripheral neuropathy. So damage to peripheral nerves can affect what proprioception. Vitamin deficiencies. Deficiency in vitamins like what vitamin B12 can affect nerve function and coordination. Right. Genetic disorders. So um, conditions like what Friedreich's ataxia or spinocerebellar ataxia, all of these can actually what? cause an ataxic gait, okay? Diagnosis, of course, as you have looked at those pictures, look at the characteristics of an ataxic gait, as you have seen it, you are doing it, okay? So you observe the gait and coordination tests just to access cerebellar function of the patient, okay? Imaging studies, studies like MRI scan, CT scan, can all help to identify what structural abnormalities in the cerebellum and the central nervous system. Laboratory tests, all right, further tests like blood tests can help to check for vitamin deficiency or, or any other underlying metabolic conditions, right? So nerve conduction studies, this one is just to access for the function of what? Your peripheral nerves, if they are still functioning well, okay? So treatments, yeah. For treatments, you can be treating the disease condition that is causing this gait. I can also be monitoring or, how I put it? You can also be managing the characteristics, okay? So things like physical therapy. So exercise can help improve the balance of the patient, the coordination of the patient, and the strength. Occupational therapy. So training can help with daily activities and improve functional independence, okay? Medications. This is depending on the underlying cause. Medications may be prescribed based on the underlying cause, all right? Just to manage the symptoms. Then assisted devices. So use of walking aids like canes or walkers just to enhance what? Stability and safety of the patient. Addressing underlying costs. So you treat conditions like vitamin deficiencies or management or managing the chronic conditions, right? Like multiple sclerosis, okay? 
if they are all right so in conclusion we see that this ataxic gait can significantly impact a person's mobility and quality of life okay so try to manage it so that improvements can ensue all right so that's it guys for ataxic gait also known as what's well, cerebellar gait